Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Zach with IT Career Questions and we are starting a new series called Zach Talks Tech. This is episode number one, so hopefully we're gonna grow this thing to 500 or more episodes because that would be amazing. So if you guys could leave a comment below and tell me what you wanna see on Zach Talks Tech, I would greatly appreciate that. Today's video, we're talking about Microsoft Windows. If you guys have a favorite operating system, let me know what that is in the comments below and why. Whichever operating system has been talked about the most, we will do a video that features that and another Zach Talks Tech. But again, give me your ideas, share your favorite operating system and let's get into this video right now today I really want to focus on Microsoft Windows and what that means to you if you are at a completely new entry level to understanding it in a business environment and kind of what the different operating systems from Microsoft will do for you so in my experience I have dealt with many Microsoft environments now that's not to say that there aren't very large Linux environments out there because they're definitely are very large Linux environments out there. But today we're just focusing on Microsoft and we'll talk about Linux in another video. Many business environments are using Windows. Why are they using Windows? It's really because it's easy to use, it's easy to access, and it's actually kind of easy to configure. A lot of people in this world already have been exposed to Windows in one way or another, and there's something to be said about that. For many years, Microsoft has had a stronghold on business environments, and they really do provide the tools and the services to manage an entire infrastructure. Some of the Windows operating systems you will see being used today are Windows 7, Windows 10, and if you're unlucky, you might see a lot of Windows 8 in an environment. You'll also run across Server 2008, Server 2012, and Server 2016. You may be very unfortunate and you have to deal with Server 2003, and Windows XP. And yes, those are still being used. You will find a lot of Windows XP and Server 2003 cases will be supporting legacy software. And it may be because the software vendor is no longer around, so they're no longer to provide updates that would keep current with the newer operating systems that are out there. And being that Microsoft has a life cycle for their operating systems, Server 2003 and Windows XP are no longer receiving updates, so it really doesn't make sense for any software vendor out there to try to update their different applications to still continue to support Windows XP. Everybody's kind of moved way past that, and you know everybody's going to Windows 7, and actually, since Windows 7 is at the end of its life cycle in 2020, a lot of business organizations are starting to migrate right now already 2018 and even in the 2017 migrating their machines to Windows 10. So I mentioned the life cycle. The life cycle is something that Microsoft put into place. So after a certain amount of years, the operating system will no longer be supported. And when it's no longer supported, it will not receive any type of updates. And what's crucial about this is the fact that technology is always growing. So the fact that your Windows XP machine may no longer receive some type of update that would support you know, future technologies that are coming out, you, you actually do run across that. You do run across that currently where there are applications that don't support Windows XP because they're all moving forward. So along with, you know, different applications, software not being supported and not working potentially, you could be putting yourself in a harmful way. Because of the fact that Windows XP and Server 2003 are no longer receiving updates, there may be vulnerabilities that are found and then exploited on machines that are still using those operating systems. So I mentioned that the end of life for Windows 7 is in 2020. So that's, you know, two years away from now. And when that happens, you're gonna see that a lot of companies are gonna start really migrating towards Windows 10 if they aren't already doing that now. So I'll actually put a link in the description below to the Microsoft operating system uh, life cycle. So make sure that you check that out. So we're gonna talk about both the desktop and server versions of Windows and what they mean to a business environment. But we're gonna start it with servers because it'll really make why the actual desktop experience of Windows is very, very important. So what makes the server edition of Windows really important is the fact that you can build an entire business organization's infrastructure from Windows with the different servers that you can actually put into place to manage your network, to manage your users, and of course, all of your other computers as well. But you have tools such as like Active Directory, which is a user and computer management tool. You also have access to group policy, 
Group policy is extremely important in a business environment because it will really set limitations on different users or computers based on what policies you set from within. You can also deploy things like printers and stuff from group policy and give you know privileged access, limited access of course, and you can also set a lot of other limitations within the desktop experience so that users can't do a lot of things that could get themselves in trouble with the IT department. You also have the ability to set up a domain controller with Windows, which is something that can help you manage your WAN or your LAN. So another really cool service that was introduced in the server edition of Windows was Hyper-V, which is a virtualization tool. So you can virtualize different operating systems from within your own Windows server operating system environment. So to start getting into the desktop experience of Windows, with group policy and Active Directory, this really affects and changes the way that a user's experience would be on a desktop in your Windows environment. You can have your Windows computer at home where you are capable of doing anything that you could possibly imagine within that computer in that system. You can add and remove programs on your home computer. You can add and remove printers from your home computer. You can get into the registry and make registry modifications from your home computer. Well, in a business environment, you use different things like Active Directory and a course group policy to set policies in place where your users cannot add or remove programs or cannot add or remove a printer. So in a business environment, your desktop experience could be heavily limited to what you are able to do and different departments could have different privileges that you don't. You could have access to different files and different system files that somebody from another department might not have. That makes it really easy for a sysadmin in a Windows environment to kind of manage everything. Being able to do different things like that within your users and your, your computer experiences, that is really crucial to how an organization functions. So I mentioned before that Windows is heavily used in a business organization. So this is important for you to learn if you are looking to get into IT. So if you're looking to get in at a help desk level, that sysadmin, network admin level, even security, learning Windows is going to be important for your career. If you're looking to be a system administrator, Linux is also going to be something that you want to know, but you cannot forget about Windows. It's very rare that you're going to come across a sysadmin who has no experience in Windows, but has done everything in Linux. Not to say that there aren't people out there that are like that, but I think any kind of uh, system administrator, whether Windows or Linux based, you are going to have some type of experience in both to really kind of hash out your skills and utilize them in the best possible way you can. But that's it for today's video. Don't forget to leave a comment and tell me what your favorite operating system is. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, hit me up in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear from you. As always, take it easy. Welcome to Zach Talks Tech, episode number one.